We locked eyes and I said, the Boston Celtics are damn worrisome after Giannis went combined 38 for 46 in his previous two outings, which consisted of going a mind-boggling 20 for 23 against Washington. Boston showed us what it's like to go up against a contender by holding the Greek freak to 7 for 20 shooting from the field making everything incredibly difficult on Giannis with their backside pressure, funneling perimeter clamps, and overwhelming athleticism defensively, it was for the most part a statement type showing. The big three of Tatum, Brown, and Porzingis combined for a cool 70, and with Chris Middleton healthy for the Bucks, the classic Milwaukee excuse when losing to Boston can't be whipped out as the Seas took care of a fully intact Bruce City assemblance, Improving to an undefeated 6-0 at home, plus an NBA best overall record of 12-3, the Seas have maintained status quo in terms of being the early title favorites, but stay tuned for a film breakdown of how Beantown neutralized Adetokounmpo and a lot more. But just 9.6% of you watching are subscribed, so if you're a hoop fan, make sure you subscribe. The Celtics did take a close 3-point W, however, did lead the Bucks by as many as 21 at one point, and have to play better defending the lead. That said, while Milwaukee finished the game on a 35-19 run, throughout the game as a whole, the Celtics resembled the much younger, quicker-to-the-rock team. Jalen Brown led the team in points, assists, and field goals while turning the ball over just once. The bald mamba slash buffalo Derek White chipped in 13, which included a timely triple in Dame Dalla's grill. Uncle Sam Hauser continued his stellar role-playing consistency, finishing as a game-high plus 10 off the pine, with seven double-digit scores, including the blossoming Peyton Pritchard, in addition to the sharply reliable veteran godfather Al Horford, who stuffed the stat sheet with 11, 8, and 6. Boston's supporting cast was prevalent in them getting over the hump on Wednesday night. But what stood out all night long was the flourishing chemistry between Jalen Brown and first-year Celtic Chris Dapps Porzingis. This handoff action with KP getting the swing from Pritchard sees the Unicorn simultaneously catch him behind the back, bounce to Jalen while not even facing him, then ghosting the pick, widely rolling to avoid Lopez which gains him downhill momentum, and completing the Brown lob with a one-handed Latvian hammer. A few possessions later off the D-White flare, watch Brown's pivot on the catch to fake perimeter backtrack, fooling both champ and Brown's take draws the gravity of Giannis and Lopez before he dumps it off to KP and the Dunkers. This time it's JB going behind the back to Porzingis in a pick and pop which results in a take from KP where he bulldozes through a Dedekumpo. The brown Kristaps connection of the Knights generated out of this DHO keep action, Porzingis fakes the handoff to White before beautifully placing a swift bouncer to JB who's cut back door on Bochamp. Most eye-popping part of the play though is Jalen proceeds to go full prime Toronto Raptor Vince Carter mode with a windmill for the ages. Speaking of flashy connections, Brown's dominant performance also saw him get loose on the fast break to find Sam Hauser for a lob, but for an in-depth breakdown on that play, here's what JB himself had to say. What possessed you to throw an alley-oop to Sam Hauser? Uh, I looked at him, he looked at me. That was all the confirmation I needed. We locked eyes, and I said, F you. Plus. <laughs> 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 he looked at me like, uh, he was ready, so I threw it to him, and he followed through, so shout out to Sam. Chris Stapps would turn Brooke Lopez into a screensaver with a fast break baptization off a D. White dime. Jalen would right out of the shoot, throw down a one-handed jam on the opening possession, and later whip out a nastily evasive in and out cross on Middleton to open up the lane. End of shot clock bailout sees a momentum spin into the lane and step back to drain it despite Bochamp draped all over him. For Chris Stapps, he got caught up in the refs, earning his league-leading seventh technical foul, which the Celtics would hold him accountable for as Horford and Brown confronted him and urged him to not get involved in that BS. KP, for the most part, though, is making the most out of being in such a well-run organization with winning players left and right, and credit to the Celtics personnel and coaching staff for embracing him and his talent, so far getting the best out of it. He looks like a different player than his days in Washington or New York. The rim protection, general defensive rotations, rebounding, and extra scoring from Chris Dapps continue to make Beantown increasingly unstoppable. But moving on, 
And against his former team, Drew Holiday struggled from the field going just one for eight, but commendably stayed involved despite that poor shooting by racking up what was tied for a team's second most eight rebounds. Got a feel for the man, he likely felt the emotions playing against the unit he won a title with, but his fellow Celtic troops picked up the slack for him. It was a second consecutive rough night for Drew as he turned the ball over seven times the game prior and had his ankles broken by Lamelo. But in that OT loss, amidst Jason Tatum's season-high 45 piece, the man made some history. Through that 14th game of the year, his 170 plus minus was the highest through that span in Celtic history since 1997 as he overtook Boston's legendary big three of Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, and Ray Allen. In terms of against Milwaukee though, the factor to take away is how Boston shut down a Giannis Adetokounmpo who resembled a man amongst boys prior to facing the Celtics. After the O board from Giannis, three Celtics crowd him and Tatum's quick hands knock it loose when Freak brings it down for a split second. Faking the dribble handoff, here Giannis is hesitant to attack Horford in the ISO and settles for the inefficient mid-ranger that he airballs. In semi-transition, Giannis attacks Hauser on an angle to his left, however Sam keeps his feet moving and glues himself to Giannis with legal forearm to body contact, while Horford and Pritchard provide backside help, forcing the miss here is essentially all Hauser. Unafraid to get up in his body on this possession, Tatum presses up just before Giannis' first dribble following the face up, which both drains Giannis' stamina and cuts off his preferred angle to attack on. From there, you see Jason's elite balance and lower body strength to slide over with a wide stance and a hand up. That plus Horford rotating for the contest at the last second throw off this layup. More Milwaukee early offense again shows us Uncle Sam Hauser's underrated defensive chops as he reads the Giannis Smitty move, cuts off the baseline with a quick shuffle, presses up with legal forearm to body contact for a millisecond before legally going straight up to which Giannis comes up short. It is put back by 2023's 36th overall pick Andre Jackson Jr., but good initial defense nonetheless. With Holiday guarding his old pal as he crosses half, he's well aware of Giannis' tendency to attack left, forcing the spin with a downward diagonal shuffle, then setting his feet to force the rare simultaneous turnover and offensive foul. To be fair, Giannis does shake his former PIC on this spin, but is met with a springy straight up yet swiping contest from the unicorn, and the freak fails to draw iron. After Giannis had dropped 82 combined in the previous two outings, clearly the Celtics coaching staff had some fine-tuned game planning entry this matchup. It was a shockingly rough night at the office for one of the game's top players in Adetta Kumpo. Next up for Boston though is a rare 2.30 afternoon matinee in Florida against an Orlando Magic team that shocked the basketball universe so far by going 10 and 5. Following a win against my Raptors, the Magic most recently took down the reigning champion Denver Nuggets, albeit without Jamal Murray. But I'm telling you, this is far from an ordinary matchup with a typically bottom-feeding Orlando squad. 2023 ROY Paolo Boncaro, the Wagner brothers, Cole Anthony, and 2021's fifth overall pick Jalen Suggs actually have the Magic looking somewhat respectable again. So taking that in, what are your final score predictions for the Orlando-Boston in-season tournament matchup on Friday? Best answer down below in the comments section earns next video shout out, and the top five commenters by the end of the year earn free NBA merch of their choosing, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Shout out to FYI Sin, who says, I feel like OKC's another year away from actually competing with contenders. They've never made the playoffs, so we don't know how everyone's going to perform in the postseason. Honestly, can't see some of the pieces like Lou Dort being the answer in the starting lineup, but they're really close to contending. Harsh words for Lou right there, but great take. Thank you for your support. D-Flow signing off.